Like a strike of lightning, the LJN Thundercats line lit up the toy market in the mid-80s. You could feel the magic and hear the roar. A roar that's still remembered as one of the best lines of the 80s, despite being on shelves for only three years. This was surely not enough time to get a copy line together to capitalize on its success. But even back then, the knockoffs from Thundera were on the move, and the bootleg cats were loose. In this Ed's Retro Geek Out, we'll take a look at some of the Cosmo Cat bootlegs, the knockoffs, and some very cool exclusive international variants that might be the next thing to add to your Thundercats collection. So be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos, and let's strap in for some toy history. The year was 1985 when Thundercats hit the toy market, and Mumra and his evil mutants weren't the only thing they were up against. Hasbro's Transformers controlled the space robots niche, their G.I. Joe Real American Heroes, the Army Toys, and Mattel's Masters of the Universe were probably the sci-fi savages they were most in line with. But thanks to a big gamble on an expensive syndicated cartoon show, these sword and sorcery space cats turned out to be one of the biggest successes for LGN. The cartoon produced by Rankin Bass was created with characters by Ted Wolf. These heroes were the perfect match for the toy maker. From 1985 up to 1989, we got 150 episodes that aired and a whole bunch of star comics by Marvel that told the tale of the Thundercats, as it soon rose to one of the highest rated shows thanks to the moral lessons neatly tucked away in each action-packed episode. I myself found out about the awesome toys through reading the comics years and years later after they came out, but kids back then that watched the cartoon each day after school were out to find their new heroes. And like with all popular properties, someone is going to get creative and try to jump on the cosmic cat train. What does he mean? Now most of the LGN toys had very distinctive sculpts, as very few corners were cut or sculpts reused when creating this line, so I do wonder how much of it they copied or tried to imitate. A lot of bootlegs can still be found in Mexico. These Mexican bootlegs are usually mistaken for the real deal from afar, but when we look closer we realize the quality is a little less. Repurposing the LGN toy molds, the toys are almost identical, but they're held together by a screw on the shoulders and hips. When we take a look at the colors, they seem a bit off from the official release, and sometimes the paint job on the faces can create some funny expressions. And that is because the toy line by LGN really put out premium toys, multicolored weapons, and added in that Battlematic action gimmick. The whole nine yards. The Battlematic action feature is something LGN introduced in their Dungeons and Dragons toy line, and it did very well. But for our two main characters, Lino and Mumra, that wasn't enough. They even got their power rings that made their eyes light up added in as well. So bootleggers would have to invest a lot in creating something that was able to compete with these premium toys. Or they could just create something that looked enough like the characters from the cartoon. Another way of creating these characters was through blow molds. There's a huge path throw out there just showing you how recognizable this character was, sometimes called Colossal Panthro which pretty much looks like a two-up from the actual toy, and the same thing goes for our main hero, Lino. Lino is a fan favorite amongst collectors, and there's another blow mold bootleg out there with a lot more articulation and hints to another type of toy. He gives off the vibes of a Shogun warrior, yet he's only standing 12 inches tall. This one would have come with the Sword of Omens and a snap-on claw shield. The paints on the face, on the other hand, could have been better, or just raises some questions. Are you okay, Lino? Are you okay? A few of these Lino faces have also been popping up. Was it part of a body, or is his face and wild hair iconic enough? to get his own bootleg. But when it comes to bootlegs, it's always more interesting to see when they made a new sculpt of the popular character, sometimes for better and sometimes for worse. I was able to find this huge one that has four points of articulation and is looking more like a grumpy cat. There's also a known younger looking lino sculpt out there. Either way, these would be a good alternative, and it's always fun to see these new sculpts come up. There appears to be loads out there for each character. Each character has their own little bootleg, their own 
reinterpretation of what the character could have looked like. So you could possibly just go on an endless collecting hunt trying to get all of these. But a toy line is only as strong as its villains, so they would need to cook up an ancient spirits of evil incantation to bring you Mumra's bootlegs. And this is the reason you get into bootleg collecting. Here's another brand new sculpt. Perhaps they just didn't have access to the molds or they didn't create a copy of the LGN ones, but decided to create their own. And this could as well just have been a real release. The sculpting is exquisite. Wizard. Mumra is almost smiling and that's how he's known amongst Thundercats collectors. Smiling Mumra. I've seen examples of other characters where another head sculpt really reels you in and it makes you wonder who made these in the same scale as the official releases. Then again, there's a ton of Mumra in his almighty form out there. When you go to one of the fine markets in Mexico, you can find a sculpt in almost any color. It's very tempting to pick them all up and it's so exciting to see the sculpt in another color scheme each time. Time. Toxic green, purple, blood red, there is not a single color that doesn't touch this mold and looks cool. And they come complete with weapons and crown. In Spain we would see a line called HP Skeleton, looking a lot like a Mumra knockoff in decaying paint form. These non-articulated 7 inch toys come in various paint jobs and have just enough Mumra aesthetics to want it as a Thundercats collector. Now the other mutants would also get their share of bootlegs like this giant blow mold slight that even comes with the weapons. And in order to defeat Mumra, the ever living and his mutants Lino and Panthro could use the Thunder Tank. Ready to an art toy vehicle work of art. But when Panthro's Thunder Tank has to go in for maintenance, he can always borrow Barney Rubble's Logging Continental or Rubble Wreck. Here we see the bootleg crossover we've always wanted as Pantro, armed with a ball bat, is driving the famous law car from the Flintstones. The Tronco Mobile bootleg is sporting the Thundercats logo proudly, but what would be the best name for this bootleg though? Now, if you wanted a Thunder Tank to match up with your bootlegs, you could also get a fairly resembling. 11 inch bootleg car. It just didn't have any of the options you'd want apart from the wheels rolling. You could also move the arms up and down on this one. And of course the tank would also get its own version in many colors for the mini versions of bootlegs. Thundercats was really an international success, remaining more popular in other parts of the world after the buyer's interest had dried up over in the US. There's even a Korean bootleg by Select Toys from 1988. Or at least that's what his imprint says. This Lino comes with stickers, sword, crossbow, and more armor. The package reads the Invincible Prince line, but the sculpt seems very familiar. Which brings us to Select Toys' Ninja Defenders or Ninja Assassin line, whom shared a lot with the LGN toy sculpt. Like the Battlematic action is here, the toys would come with weapons and a printed cloth to be able to disguise themselves as Ninja Assassins. And apart from some of the line looking like mutants, there isn't a lot of similarities with Thundercats, but it proved to be a great sculpt as a basis for this Korean boot. Leg. And for Sun Gold, it was also time to let the cat out of the bag. Oh, yeah! As they came up with Sun Gold's Thunder Heroes. I mean, what would you call your Thundercats knockoff line? Thunder Heroes had moving arms, legs, twisting head and waist, and came complete with a sword and belt. At the time, they were also doing wrestlers knockoffs. And this isn't very far apart from that. As they eliminated the cat features, it was perhaps easier to create these because they're basically wrestlers. Right? Someone get me the eye of Thunder, cause you're gonna need side beyond sight to make a Thundercat out of this one. Although Sun Gold had enough cat sculpts to work with from their Galaxy Fighters and our Galaxy Lines. Now the iconic Lino hair would be a determining factor for other knockoff limes that wanted to match up their toys with subliminally mixing in some Thundercats. There would always be a Lino looking character in these lines that kept pumping out more and more toy lines in different colors. In Super Ninja, Invisible warriors he's known as General Frider. In Planet Hero he is a powerful action figure that comes complete with interchangeable snap-on stay-on weapons and accessories. And in Ninja Commandos he is part of a team of six with twistable head and waist combined with movable arms and legs and weapons and you basically have your standard 5.5 knockoff. But there would be one knockoff line that actually took some of the molds and tried creating something new with it. Guerreros del Mañana. I probably said that wrong, I know. 
or the Warriors of Tomorrow from Argentina threw Masters of the Universe and Thundercats together in a blender and created these daring color blending monsters. Released to the toy market in 1985, we can very well see the mold of Slight pop through in some of these creations by Guillermo Zanoco. This knockoff line definitely captured the excitement around these sci-fi savage toys and made fans along the way, so they're still making homages to this line and still creating new ones. And like with any big property, the marketing machine wouldn't end with cartoon commercials and some toys. You have to go deeper into merchandise, fast food premiums, but also role-playing toys and tools to keep your collection together. In 1986, Tara Toys created a licensed collector's showcase shield. You could snap on your favorite figures and carry them around or have them displayed six on each side as the shield can also stand. Even here, you could get a cheaper alternative thanks to Woolworths Battle Shield, the collector's showcase that holds and displays 12 fantasy figures, including Master of the Universe, Thundercats, Blackstar, and most other 5.5 figures. Originally retailing at $4.99, this is pretty much the same thing as Tara Toys came up with, and I wonder if it stayed in stores long enough. Eventually, you would see the same company made the licensed and the unlicensed version. On the packaging, they used toys from the fantasy world by Soma. They do reference Thundercats and Master of the Universe on the packaging, just like when Remco did it for their Conan line and ended up getting sued. As an official release, this Battle Bones type storage toy is quite the rarity, and I think the knockoff version is even more uncommon. But this next piece of merchandise is probably the oddest the Robocats bedsheets. A bedsheet? Trying to cash in on the Thundercats? Having the best name so far for a knockoff line, I would love to see some action figures based on these drawings. Although some of the more recent bootlegs I got do resemble the Lino quite well. I love how much detail went into Panthro and Snarf for this one. This bedsheet is a work of art. And you really can't roleplay Thundercats without the Sword of Omens. The official release with the light up function is one of the best ever made. So Toy Fun Max's Thunder Sword definitely found some inspiration from the Sword of Omens. This safe, flexible blade looks apart from afar, but is quite different. Perhaps part of a line called Dragon Sword? This battery operated and up to four color changing light up sword doesn't really scream Thundercats, but deep inside you know this just wants to be the Thundercats role playing sword you asked for Christmas back in 1986. Lord of Omens, come to my hand. Now there's also a Korean version of this sword and it has great packaging with the logo on it, Pantro amongst the tagline, Thunder Thunder is on the blade and the blade is somewhat oddly shaped but this one is one of the most colorful swords out there. In 1990, the Cheng Cheng Toys Company created the Sonic Sword, which also has Thundercats written all over. From the copied logo to the Thunderbolts, it would activate its light function as you swung it around, accompanied by sounds. You can get a variety of sounds after you whip out the power of the Sonic Sword in your hands. And then there's some official variants that add localized names, so it might be easy to mistake them for a bootleg, like Cosmo Cats for the French-speaking countries. In Argentina, they had official releases that deviated in an interesting way. Playful got to use the LGN molds, but they would often come out differently, where the paint applications were different or some features just weren't accentuated. Also, the plastic use for these was of a different quality. So, if you're looking for more variants, check out the playful editions like the Jaga over here. But the award for the best looking version and deluxe packaging for a Thundercats official release goes to Brazil's Glasslight, who produced these in a cool window box. Now, this is definitely something I'm gonna be after trying to get one of these in the box. It just looks deluxe. It looks great. Now for a line to only have three years on the market and to be able to cement itself as an icon of toys in the 80s is impressive. I hope to someday complete my Thundercats collection with all the characters I'm still missing, but I'll be keeping an eye out for more amazing knockoffs as well. Now, there's probably a lot more epic looking bootlegs out there, but they didn't make the list today, so be sure to leave them in the comments down below or share a picture on Instagram. So imagine that lino hair on a figure, and I wanna know how you would have called your knockoff line for Thundercats. Leave that in the comments below, please. Be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos and follow me on my socials. If you'd like to support the channel even more, then please check out the Patreon. And there's a lot of people I wanna thank for this video. I wanna thank Javaho Creations for the help on this video, Raul El Pilon, 
I want to thank Raldo for his awesome collection, and of course, Retro Geek Mike and Maddie for helping out with this episode. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.